Right then folks, welcome to the beautiful Old Huff Fisheries where I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be starting off a new series today where we're going to be looking at targeting certain species of fish. Obviously this is fishing folks and especially on the mixed fishes that I'll be going to, you know, any number of fish are going to come along. But to start things off, because it's blooming freezing, where are we now? We're like middle of January, we're going to be starting off catching roach. So as I say, I'm going to be going over to, to different fisheries, targeting these fish. So if you've got any suggestions of like certain great big wobbly crucians or massive tents, massive bream, certainly chubs and ids folks, where I can come to and come and catch these fishes, then let us know in the comments. I can't wait uh, to get this series kicked off. So waffling again, aren't I? Uh, we're going to be going through roach today. Uh, so we're coming the Big Max Pool, which is absolutely solid. Solid with roach, but there's obviously the skimmers in, there's hybrids in. So we need to make sure that we're getting everything fine uh, and perfect regarding our ground bait mix. Now, there's so many different kinds of ground bait mix out there. Basically, what I want from my ground bait is I want it quite active, but at the minute I don't want much food content in there because I want the option of potentially loose feeding to try and draw the roach shallow, which will quite happily come shallow. There's ice on the water this morning, but I'm fully expecting to catch if not shallow, then certainly through the water. Uh, we can go through rigs and all that later on. But it's the mix that I want to give it that bit of a kickstart initially, um, but not having loads of food content in there. So that's why I've gone for the Match Method Dark, which is a, a fish meal of content, but it's, uh, you know, it's quite sticky in that it's going to take me Black Lake down to the bottom and then little bit of activity but not as much food in there to get the roach grubbing around it's like one of them mixes certainly uh, the lake i used to use time and time again back in the day i absolutely adore the mix roach absolutely love it as well if it was a little bit warmer i'd, I'd, I'd probably cut this out and just go for the black roach and the black lake them two together really really active mix you know lots of sort of hemp little particles in there in the black roach but as i say, i just want to find everything down for today with it being so cold but I want that element of like a little bit of fish meal in. Because, obviously commercials, all through the heights of summer and when it's warmer weather, that's all these fish see folks, you know, they just see that fish meal in the pellets and obviously fish meal ground bait, so the fish are so used to it. Even on natural waters now, you know, uh, I'd always put a tiny little bit of fish meal in, certain for like targeting obviously skimmers and bream, but even roach have owned onto it. You know, my, I'm waffling again folks, but I've got to tell you, on my local river weaver, uh, you're catching roach on pellets now absolutely unheard of a few years ago but it's just you know with obviously the specimen anglers going on targeting the carps and everything that's what they're coming on to so enough waffling let's go through the mix now i'm going to simplify everything so around about a pint bait tub we know that three pints is roughly equivalent to a kilo ground bait there or thereabouts so for this i'm going to be putting one pint bait tub of the match method dark in which is fish mealy bindery um bindery mix because we've got it's about five and a half foot here, so it's pretty deep and I want to get that bait down to the bottom. And then to the one part of that, I'm going to be putting two parts of the Black Lake in, which has got obviously not, not as much food content, but it's still pretty active and obviously it's going to attract them lovely, lovely roaches. So, without further ado, we've got a little we've got a little guest here as well. We've got a, we've got a Canada who's coming in. Go on, the Canada's. Might give him a bit of feed. So, if I do it this way, rather than just sort of open... Hey, oh, we've got a method. No, you can't have the method. Go on, the methods rather than just sort of like tipping that into the bucket, you know what I mean? It, we know we've got exact quantities every time with this. So, just before the line in the, in the bait tub, that's a pint, so a pint of that goes in there. In fact, I'm gonna put that uh, under that wrapper there, because we don't like wastage. And then with a the black lake, we're gonna be putting two of them bad boys in. Colour-wise, yeah, I'm going to say, obviously, a darker ground bait is probably better for this time of year, but, you know, don't let it overly bother you too much. Personally, I just like a darker colour ground bait, but, you know, that, that natural sort of, you know, brown colour, no trouble at all with that. So, that's them two in there, and that's what you're left with. So you're left with a fine lake on top and a little bit hard, harder, heavier, you know, more sort of coarse mix at the bottom. So give them a good mix through. And the next thing we need to do is add some water to it. So little bits at a time. Obviously, if you're using a drill, folks, the most important thing to remember is don't take that drill anywhere near the bank because of the vibrations, it's just going to scare all the fish. So make sure, even in the morning, you know what I mean? I'd always recommend 
if you know you're going to be fishing ground bait the first thing you want to do is get it mixed as soon as you get to your peg because as i'll say tell you in a bit it's going to take at least half an hour to get right you know with obviously all the air that needs to go into the ground bait you need to put more water to it to get it back to that same consistency so if you're using a drill do it away from the bank even in the morning when you wake up uh, or at your van or your car whatever you don't take it to the bank with you but mixing it with your hands go on the mittens you can obviously do this so it's little bits at a time just get that ground bait coming together like that give that a good mix through now obviously there's consistencies we want it i want it really over wet so i want to be putting it in in loose now the reason i'd like to put it in loose anything up to I mean, you can put it in any depth, but I like to put it in loose up to like six foot, um, just so it's creating that cloud just before it gets to the bottom and it's gone over a bigger area, but it is ultimately going to go and stick on the bottom. I don't like putting it in a bowl because certainly on silty, cheeky, silty venues like this, that bowl can go rock hard, stick into the silt and just sort of like crumble around the silt. So you're only getting a little catchment area. Whereas when you put it in loose, it's gone over a bigger area. Obviously you've got to be careful if it's like undertone that on the venue. So if I was feeder fishing, that would be absolutely perfect. But we haven't feeder fishing folks, fishing on the bowl. So we'll get all the rest of that water in. So we want it almost like wet sand. It's pretty much the same way I mix all my ground baits. You know, summer, winter, I always want it quite damp, like wet sand. A tiny bit more to that. And look at the colour of that. So it's like, it was almost, uh, you know, sort of grey blacky colour, but now it's gone that lovely, lovely dark colour it smells amazing honestly folks i wish you had smell of vision and now we've got that consistency where it's like a real sort of wet sand damp sand if you like so you know what i mean you could put that in a cup and that sinks straight down to the bottom but what's going to happen 20 minutes time 15 20 minutes time that's going to go back to that real fine consistency so what i'll have to do is come back add more water to it uh, get it back to that consistency and then we'll put it through a riddle so um I think i'm going to go on my box now and then come back to me when we've got the ground bait ready right then folks as if by magic here we are 20 minutes later when the ground bait's all done for you honestly i can't wait to get this in and start catching them lovely roaches so Went back to it after about 20, yeah, 15 minutes, I'm going to say, and it went to that sort of like feedery mix, you know, really fine. So put about another, I'm going to say, quarter of a pint of water to it, brought it back up to that damp sand consistency, and this is what you're left with. Lovely and fine. I've put it through a two mil riddle or pinky riddle, if you like, because this time of year, I do want it fine. I don't want any sort of bigger particles um, left in that ground bait, which you might get if you're putting it through a little bit bigger riddle that you can get away with in the summer, like a four mil or, or even a six mil. So that ground bait, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some uh, out of my swim to start with, just to sort of kickstart things off. And then I'm going to come back and talk you through the rigs that I'm going to use for, well, which is what I use for, for roach fishing all over the place and the rigs that I swear by. So first things first. Now, obviously bearing in mind how cold it is, I don't want to be putting I know it's hard for me because I do like feeding, but I don't want to be putting loads of bait in because we're going to be fishing this within sort of, well, if I waffle about the rigs more, you know, it's going to be a long time, but hopefully within 10 or 15 minutes. So what I want to do, I certainly want to put a few casters in. So what have we got there? Uh, probably 30, 35 casters, put a few of them in. And I've got the old favourite, dead disco pinkies. Well, some of them are coming too. These have been in a plastic bag for like three weeks and some of them are starting to come too already the proper hard as nails so remember me saying so i'm going to put them in there remember me saying i don't want to squeeze it too hard literally all i'm going to do is just cover that back up again and then just get sort of like a tangerine size if you like and just give it one little squeeze like that that is all i'm going to put in so as soon as that hits the water it's going to break out and it's going to go over a nice area so that's what we've got in that pot yeah so not loads in there so I'm going to ship that out to me to me marker. I've already plumbed the rigs up and I'm fishing at 13 with a little dolly butt on. Now, as you know, I love fishing with these little dolly butts so I can fish around the area. So my dolly butt, I've got it marked on on my middle leg on my box and I've got my marker, which is a spare peg over there. And I'm just going to put that towards camera that way. I'm not going to drop it from a height. I'm just going to sneak it in just so you can see all that, that coming out. So you see what I mean about it? As soon as it hits the water, instantly it starts to 
sort of like breakups. It's going to be going over a, a bigger, in a big cloud down to the bottom where it might be over. Certainly if there was towing it, folks, it might be over sort of like a couple of foot, which for me, perfect. Now, because there's not much food content in it, I'm going to, be going, going to go in with another one of them, but not as much feeding this time. So literally I'm just going to get, again, that tangerine-sized bowl, ooh, tiny little squeeze, and we're just going to put the same amount of casters in it again. And then I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to put any more in. And that's what I do to kickstart a swim. Obviously, bearing in mind if it was, you know, um, windier, I'd a bit of a toe on it, then I'd be squeezing them slightly harder, but never, never too hard. I'm going to bring this one slightly more to the right, just so I've got a bit of a bigger catchment area. And there we go. That's my ground bait fed. Nice and simple. So that's going to get left now. Probably 10, 15 minutes until we start fishing. Right, so rigs wise. There's basically three different kinds of rigs that are used for basically most of my sort of commercial silverfish fishing, but in particular roach fishing. Uh, and that is a bulk and two droppers instant straight down to the bottom where the fish are when you get a lot there because at some point these fish will feed more often than not you know you're into them straight away straight away straight away but if you're not then it might be a sort of like last knockings last hour so you want to be make sure that you're having a rig that's going to get straight down getting job done so that's when my bulk and droppers comes in my next one uh, and the one that i'll always always start on is my reverse tapered rig phenomenal for catching everything basically but certainly for roach when you know they're in that sort of bottom third of the water level uh, layers it's it's superb for catching everything but in particular roach and the last one hopefully um we might catch shallow today i have got my favorite shallow rig set it around well anything from sort of two to three foot with just light shots down the line holding a tight line carbon stem float watching that float come through hopefully we'll catch a few on that and it can be deadly on its day obviously if it's a bit warmer that probably be what I'll focus on more than anything. And obviously bait wise, we'll touch on bait. Uh, we've got casters, obviously got red and white maggots and we've got disco pinkies. Um, it's one of them. I'm gonna bring some element of loose feed into it at some point. I'm gonna see what, what the response is first. If that doesn't work, that's when I'm gonna pick catapult up and usually that's when you start getting a few bites, but we'll see what happens first. So let's go through the rigs then. Let's go through them in order what I've just said. So let's start from the top. First things first, you've got to consider your elastics for, for this time of year, certainly for roach fishing. Um, for me, you can't beat solid elastics. Uh, solid five or solid sixes, Preston slip is, for me, the best elastic in the whole wide world. If it was deeper venues, what we're saying? Sort of seven, eight foot plus maybe, that's when I go on to the black slip, the eight. Um, sets the hook, but it's got a lot of forgiveness in it as well, you know, for, for the likes of these roach that can dart around a little bit. And if your elastic's too heavy, you're going to bump them and that's why i'll never ever use um, a hollow elastic because you don't get the retraction the same in your in your pole in your pole top you can tend to have it a little bit dangly and then if you sort of go the other way and tighten the elastic up so it goes back in your pole top every time it's too tight then all right for the likes of bream and obviously f1s but no good for roach you want to make sure you're getting these roach in when you hook them so nice light elastics the main one six is slip we've got there Main line on pretty much all my rigs this time of year is going to be 0.14 AccuPower. 0.16 you get away with that as well, but I just tend to use 0.14 because when the wind picks up on these venue folks, there's not as much drag on the line, you know, through the water. So that's why I like to use a, a finer main line. So always 0 0.14, 0 0.16, the absolute heaviest. Um, again, always got back shots on, as you'll see. This bit here, so obviously I talk about this quite a bit, the distance from pole tip to float. Um, for me, I never like to come any shorter than 12 inches, even for when I'm fishing shallow this time of year, because obviously you've got to consider the water clarity and also the weather that can have a massive impact this time of year, in particular with the wind. So if you're shortening your line up, pull tip to float, and the wind suddenly gets up, it's going to be blowing your float all over the place. So make sure, I'm going to say minimum 18 inches, something like that. Sometimes I'll go even longer. Float wise, so we've got a 414's uh, F1 fine on. In fact, I've got the same float on both my rigs, but they're going to be doing two completely different jobs. Uh, F1 fine, 
yeah, for this time of year, you've got to be using these fine bristles and, and ideally carbon stems so that when you're holding a tight line, you can watch that flow all the way through the water. Um, there's a couple of different ways of laying the rig in, which I'll show you with, with both. Um, but obviously we'll go through that when we start fishing. So nice fine bristle, I've blacked them out here because I've got white water, the bestest water in the world to see, obviously a black tip bristle on. 1.2 mil bristle, um, and then coming down the rig. So first things first, so you can see how positive this is. There's, there's my 12 inches guide on my pole. Um, so I've got all my bulk of shot, which is two number eights, three number nines, uh, about 13 inches. Yes, yeah, so really, really positive. And then below that, I've got two number nines nice and positive and then a four inch uh in fact we've got one of them bad boys straight out of the packet an 18s sfl obviously these are six six inches i'll just trim that down to four inches and it's straight on and i'll be putting you know single maggot single caster things like that proper roach baits even don't tell anyone folks but a disco pinky in a maggot Shh, that's i'm not telling anyone else that's just for you that probably my go-to bait for for this time of year and that's a finished rig so you can see how positive it is obviously four inches a shot another four inches a shot and then we've got our main bulk of shot over that so you can get straight down to where the fish are feeding so that's the that's the rig for when the fish are proper having it coming over the ground bait and there's a lot there that's the rig that i'll go for the rig that i'll always always start off on this time of year is this reverse tapered one so let me take you back up this end you'll see everything's exactly the same so we've got our sixes slip on Main line's exactly the same, got a two number eights back shot, same distance of line, pole tip to float, exactly the same float on, but this bit here is where it changes, folks. And I've only been probably, I mean, I kept getting shot with that Jay all the time. Andrew, you've got to get on the tapered rig, got to get on the tapered rig. And the last two years, it's made a massive difference to my fishing. I've always been a bulk and droppers, always either bulk and two, bulk and three droppers, but this rig by far exceeds that. When it's sort of these conditions or the fish are watching your bait through the water when you want to get down quick and get job done bulk and droppers you can't beat it but for like this time of year this reverse taper and what do i mean by reverse taper basically we're starting off uh at bigger intervals towards your hook with the shots and then slowly but surely just getting um you know closing the gap on on them shots so we start off from the hook end first exactly the same four inch um point 11 with an 18s sfl b on and we've got a number 10 there so just above the loop um and then four inches above that we've got another number 10 and then it goes to three inches that's number what's that that's a number nine three inches and then two inches number nine one inch number nine and then you can see it's just getting shorter and shorter so you can imagine when you're holding a tight line to this rig what's happening this bulk of shot is going down fairly quick but then you've got a nice spread of shots behind it coming in lovely and slow it's a fantastic way of fishing so you can see my last shot is just over me 18 inches there um, obviously the deeper it is then you might want to put them a little bit further away and use bigger shots but for roach I've always found number 10 sometimes no I'm not going down the number 11 route number 10s and 9s for roach um, deeper water possibly number 9s and 8s so that's my tapered rig that's the one that I'm going to be starting on and then oh, we've got the bestest rig in the world so a little bit different in the setup with this um, shallow one so this is going to be set remember it's sort of what is it there it's five and a half foot um, this is going to be for fishing between sort of two and a half to three and a half foot elastic wise I've gone lighter this time folks I've gone for a five slip simply because when you're you're hooking them fish in that depth if you're striking too hard, sometimes with the sixes, and fish can come right to the top, give it a, bit, a little bit of a wobble. I'm talking about the little babby fish now, little babby ones. Uh, give it a little bit of a wobble and they'll fall off. Whereas the fives just gives you more so you can strike into the fish, ship back, and it'll keep that fish under the water. So that's why I've gone a little bit lighter. And you'll notice as well, I've got more line pole tip to float. They're a bit far away, them shots. So two number eights, again, exactly the same line, 0.14. We've got a 410s F1 maggot float. That shape of float, can't beat it. And then coming down the line, rather than shots this time, folks, we've got 11s stops. It's so important, 11s, that you're using them because it takes your bait down roughly at the same speed as what your shots are falling. So if you're holding a tight line to that float, which incidentally, obviously with the carbon stem, that's what you're getting, it's falling at the same speed. Um, so they're all four inches apart. And then I've got a four inch, exactly the same hook length on again hopefully we'll catch on that but i'm only going to start catching on that when i introduce that element of of loose feed 
But starting things off, I never want to lose for you to start with. I just want to see what's going on. You know, obviously match conditions, I'll see what other people are doing. If they're starting to lose feed and they're starting to get bites from that, that'll, mean, that'll make me make the decision to obviously pick catapult up and get some feed in. It's going to be going, up, going over a bigger area, but trust me, folks, that's what you want with roach. You don't want to be feeding past, obviously, where we're fishing, which we'll come to later on. You want to be getting them in a, in a bigger area. Um, so, yeah, it's just you're seeing how simple I kept it. You know, three top kits that will do absolutely everything that I want. I'm fishing one swim today, 30 metres, keeping it nice and simple. I think we should go and see if there's any fishes rocked up on that ground bait. Yeah! Right then, so I probably had 10 minutes and as I expected to be roach, we're into them pretty much straight away. We've got, what we've got, six or seven little baby roach uh, from the tapered rig. We've had a few, sort of as it's settled, waiting 30, 40 seconds for a bite. And then we've had a couple where they've come on the drop as well. Um, so it's one of them, obviously at the minute, I'd, I'm quite happily leaving it with this tapered rig. But for me, I want to introduce an element of, of loose feeding. Not yet, I'm going to show you what I mean first with this uh, with this tapered rig. So I'm just, all I've got on is a single red maggot on at the minute. Nice and simple. And I'm sort of fishing around my feed area. Remember where I said I'm plumbed up to? So my joint in my pole on my little baby section is on my middle leg of my box. Um, and I'm just holding a tight line so that that tapered rig is in full effect there. So what you've got is obviously them main bulk of shots coming down nice and quick and then in that sort of like last 18 inches the bottom third of the water you've got them there you go we had a little dink then you've got them lighter shots coming into play oh he fell off no nobody likes to see him fall off but that's what you'll get you know you get the odd one that will fall off um but that's that's what we're getting at the minute so quite happy with them but i want to show you the difference in a bit I'm going to pick that heavy rig up because there's definitely going to be enough ground bait down there even though it's been, what, probably 25 minutes I'd say before we fed it, 20 minutes maybe. Definitely still going to be enough ground bait down there, enough, uh, certainly enough baiting for the for the fish. I want to show you the difference with, and how, or how I'll lay the rigging differently with that bulk and droppers. Because um, we are getting fish on the bottom but most of them are coming sort of like from now this is when we're getting the bites let's say it's pretty much always that bottom third um so the thing with roach is obviously introducing that ground bait to get them in the area uh, and then obviously the, with a loose feed that can bring more in but then what you, the other trouble you'll have with loose feeding is you'll get them all at different different levels and you're constantly changing depth which isn't a bad thing certainly in sort of this depth of water we've got like five and a half foot so that's settled now no one oh, we had a bite just as soon as it's settled uh, so you see i'm laying it in so with the tapered rig the best way i've found is to lay it out to the side whichever way left experiment with that folks so sometimes it's better go oh, that was another bite on the drop sometimes it's better going um upwind so that when you're laying it in the wind's sort of blowing your float back and it's keeping a tight line all the time or other times it can be better going uh, with the wind always pays to experiment with that but with this tapered rig, it's far better to lay it in, hold a tight line to it. You can obviously also um, lift your float out and then lower it when your sort of shots come right under your float and drop it down. But for me, um, you're losing the effectiveness for that tapered rig doing it that way because you know you can see you're getting bites straight away with holding that tight line. There's another little one there. Ah, oh, and that fell off as well. <laughs> not having a good day of it, are we folks? So these are little tiny, tiny little fish. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if we can get into them because them last two have been right on the bottom. This is why we have different rigs set up to do different jobs. Now I'm going to lay this in completely different. I'm still going to lay it, I'm still going to flick it out to the side, but what I'm going to do is bring that bulk of shot, I'm going to bring it right back over my feed area and then lay my float right on top of that. So that basically, we're going straight down to the bottom and then getting into them lovely fishes straight away. As I say, they're all down in that bottom third of the water. So I'll lift that out, take that out to the side, shots back over me where my marker is, float right over the top. So you can see 
floats there now, we're fishing, fishing straight away. That's how quick it is with that rig. So when you're in a lot of fish in there, you know, really sort of having a go on the bottom or down towards the bottom, you can't beat this, this bulk and droppers. It's so effective. But starting off wise, as I say, for always that, that tapered one for, uh, for starting off. So there we go. A little bit quicker maybe. So the only thing you're going to miss out on is them fish potentially watching that bait through the water. That's the only thing you're going to miss out on. But as I say, it's fish like that, you know, sort of getting on for two ounce that you can catch every chuck. It's just one of my favourite ways in the old wide world of fishing folks, to be fair. And the frequency of ground bait feeding. Um, basically, I'm, I'm going to fish it out. You, you, you've seen how quick we're getting bites. We're not having to wait more than, oh, what, 40 seconds. As, as soon as that starts to change and you, you know, you go maybe a couple of minutes, something like that, um, and you don't get a bite, that for me tells, tells me that the fish have come in, grazed on that bait, you know, they've had the fill, um, and they've just eaten and mopped up everything there and they want some more. So you see how, how, how much more productive that rig is. I'm getting straight down to them, nice and positive. But that's, do you see that bite then? The bites can sometimes be hardly anything. So that's why you've got to use fine bristle floats and dot it right down. Um, see, I went off on a bit of a tangent then, didn't I? Coming back to the feeding, yeah. You've seen how quick we're getting the bites. As soon as that changes, and you're going a bit longer, that tells me that the fish have fed, eating that bait, so it's time to top up. Now, topping up wise, yeah, I pretty much do exactly the same, you know, same size balling. It says if I want, I'm a bit reluctant to start loose feeding, and I mentioned it when we first started, but I'm a bit reluctant to start loose feeding at the minute, so that was a dink then. Uh, simply because, you know, we're getting bites pretty much all the time. The only time I'd start to loose feed, um, would be if I wasn't getting bites, just to try and make, make things happen. But at the minute, the, the beauty of that, putting that ground bait in, and certainly not much food content with the, introducing the lake, is that, you know, they're coming straight into my um, hook bait, which is what I want. So they're singling that hook bait out and they're nailing it every time. Whereas obviously, when it's a little bit warmer, and that's when you'd introduce the likes of that, that black roach, you know, a lot more active, more food content in it. Um, but with it so cold, as I said, there's still ice on that part of the lake, still ice, all, all iced, all iced over, it's still all iced over that part of the lake. So I'm literally sticking to single red maggot, but I mean, it's, it, it was, it's clear, isn't it? You know, the difference in rigs from using this one to that tapered one, it's just like, it, it's changed it in an instant. We've gone from missing the odd bar, was a bigger fish down there. We need to put some bait in down fish, folks. We've had a big jumper down here. But yeah, from changing uh, changing the rigs from that tapered to uh, the more positive Balkan droppers, a lot quicker. A lot quicker. And obviously, them fast bites, they, they can be lines, I suppose, them. If I was getting a lot of them, then obviously, certainly with the element of loose feeding, if I was loose feeding, I was hitting them fast bites, and that's a sign that, you know, the fish are coming up in the water. Um, incidentally, plumbing up wise, both of the rigs are plumbed up to sort of the bottom of the body because it is very, very silty. A lot of the venues you'll get, obviously, um, in that silt, you've got to be going a little bit more over depth. So middle to the bottom of the body is about right. And also movement wise, if I wasn't getting um, bites, I was waiting for bites as well, I'd be, you know, quite happy to lift the float up and drop it down again. You know, show them the bait and let them follow it down. Again, that's where, that's a bit of a lift bite then. That's where the uh, tapered rig, rig comes into it a little bit more. I think that was on from when we had that lift bite, that. So if you're getting lots of them, lots of funny little bites, just change around with your float a little bit. Um, move it a little bit shallower. So it can be that, you know, obviously, because the fish is so cold. They're like plumbing ice cubes, folks. The fish is so cold that they'll come into that bait take it and just sit there basically it's quite happy grazing on, on all the other feed that's there so if you knock a little bit of a depth off you don't want to come well you do sometimes you do want to come slightly off bottom but that's when you can get them pongy bites that are like ridiculously hard to it so as a rule i always like to fish over depth 
you know, middle to the bottom of the body of the float. So I'm going to pick the tapered rig back up again after this one and show you the difference. So that was a bite then, see how it's just coming slightly off bottom, uh, slightly up rather. So I'm well happy with how this one's going. Match conditions obviously I wouldn't be doing anything different. Quite happily catching one of them every single chuck. But I want to show you the difference and what I mean with this tapered one. I say it's, it's great for detecting the bites and everything through the water, but sometimes it's just not, not positive enough. But it's, it, I'll always start off on it, as I say. It's a great indicator of what's going on in your peg. So out to the side and then hold that tight line to it. So anything through the water, so you see how slow that float's settling. Obviously all them shots are going to register on that float. And it's just enabling you to see anything through the water. See how we had a little dink then. Great way of fishing. But not as, at the minute, without its fishing, nowhere near as effective as that, that bulk and droppers, which is shoom, getting straight down there, getting job done. It's mad, isn't it, the difference? Absolutely nuts it is. But with this one, because of how we've got it shotted, we can move it around more, and usually that's when you're getting your bites after that movement. So you're showing the, the bait to the fish, and they're following it back down. We had a little tiny dig then, there we go. So that was off that movement, yeah? But smaller fish. Much smaller fish on the tapered one, but it just, it winkles fish out when, you know, other rigs don't. That's that tapered one. I'm getting back to the bulk and droppers one again. Now, the, how it's going, obviously I'm going to fast forward and everything for you lovely lot today. How it's going, I wouldn't change anything. But what I'm going to do now is start introducing some loose reed because I'm convinced roach being roach, they will come up in the water. Obviously all you do with your ground bait is you just fish it out folks. Um, you know, as soon as it goes a, a break from the norm, so we're getting bites, certainly with a minute every time we go in, as soon as it's a break from the norm and you go like two, maybe three minutes, that's when you put another ball of ground bait in. But what I wanna do is start introducing a little bit of a loose feed and see what happens. So, I'll that in again. So when I loose feed then, this rig will become less effective and that tapered rig will come into it a little bit more. So I'm just picking up sort of 20, 20 casters and I'm gonna double feed them every time. Important that you try and keep this side of your, of where you're fishing as well, folks. You don't wanna be pinging past it because all that'll happen is you'll push your fish out. Small fish. It'll probably take a good hmm, 10 minutes or so for them, that loose feed to come into effect. But what will probably start happening, you're gonna get more signs on on your float, uh, possibly the odd far looker, and that's a sign that them fish are coming up in the water. So you can go back to that tapered rig, and then eventually the, the shallow rig, and that's when you can do your proper damage. Let's say it's that instant hit of that ground bait to start with, which is what you want. There we go. So you can see the spread I've got on them casters, which that's what I want. I don't want them. I don't want them tight. So you see, instantly starting loose feeding, how things start changing. Amazing, isn't it? But you hundred percent need that ground bait to get them into your peg first. Oh, look, baby skimmer. Go on, going to swing him and all then. It definitely deserves a netter. Well, it's like a. Uh, it's not a skimmer. What is it, Jay? It's like a pommy. Pommy thing, isn't it? It's like, a, what is it? Is it an actual species of fish or is it a hybrid? I don't even know what they are, folks. Like, just big eyed fish to me. Look like a skimmer. But then they look like an hybrid as well. Don't know. There's loads of them in here. So we can catch some more. But yeah, see the difference with like loose feeding and how quick it is. But rig choice, folks. How often do we say about rig choice? It's so important. I could probably get away with an even heavier float there. But I just wanted to keep things simple and show you the difference with the same size float but the different shotting patterns. Oh. So effective, sinking nice and quick, getting straight down, just getting job done. That's what we want. So 
So all the while, what I'll be looking for in this is like the little dinks, you know, bumping fish, far looking fish. That's all signs of that the fish are coming up in the water. But bearing in mind, as I said before, the way it was going, I probably wouldn't have changed anything because I was getting bites. I was happy with how it was going. I wouldn't have started loose feeding. I'd let someone else commit first. The only time I'd bring that element of loose feed into me fishing would be if I wasn't getting bites whatsoever. You know, that, that loose feeding, draws fishing, um, just gets gets things going in the peg, basically. Um, and that's obviously what we want. Oh, another little dink. The bites are just ridiculous, aren't they? But again, slightly better fish. Oh, loving this. Absolutely loving this, folks. Go on the roach. Just amazing fishing. For the time of year and how cold it is, you just can't beat it. So we're probably only, what, half an hour into the session as well. Wanna chuck. And I fully expect it to carry on like this. Incidentally, me, uh, you know, the little half extension, the little babby extension that I always use, certainly when you're loose feeding, that definitely comes into play. You know, fish around your feed, as long as you try and keep your bait this side of your, of your float, uh, fish past it, that does work really well. It'll be, I'd imagine it'll be a bit yet before they do start to come shallow, but um, or if they do come shallow, they should do, certainly be in roach. Yeah, but that's when usually, uh, you know, you start doing more of your damage. Certainly the bigger fish come up in the water better, but it's just, it can be faster, much faster. Little dink on that then. He's, he's been on about half an hour, him. Just wanted to make sure, folks. Just wanted to make sure. So I don't need to change anything at the minute. But I will do, because I want to show you. So I'll have another one on this, and I'm going to go back to the tapered one. Because I've started loose feeding, I'll expect to get bites probably through the water or just as it's settled. Whether it'll be as quick as this, I don't, I'm not, not convinced, but I just want to show you the difference in what you can do by, you know, obviously making the wrong decisions sometimes. You'd know straight away, or certainly within sort of 15, 20 minutes, if, oh, bump that one, if uh, loose feeding wasn't right, because again, you wouldn't get any signs on your float and you won't be getting bites, so you just, again, nip back to just putting the ground bait in, and sitting and waiting, having a patient match. But, more than not, certainly with roach, they do like that element of loose feed over the top. And the beauty of this is where you can carry on introducing the ground bait, just to, uh, obviously, keep them fish in your peg. That's a bit of a left bite then. Yeah, so a little tiny bobby fish. I'm gonna go back to that tapered one now, and because we've been feeding them casters for getting on for 10 minutes or so, we should get some through the water. Still got a single red maggot on, keeping it nice and simple. I don't tend to bother with casters until like halfway through the match. Some of that I've never done, because obviously maggots are pretty much guaranteed, whereas sometimes with casters, obviously, well, more often than not with casters, you will get the bigger fish. Um, but it can be a nightmare, you know, certainly when you're fishing at distance, if you bump a fish or miss a bite, strike too wide, your caster can come off. So, because we've brought that element of loose feed in now, I'm expecting to get bites anywhere from, like, now. Just as it's starting to settle. So you see, we've still got a bit of an angle on that flow. And it's just starting to settle. Probably now it's hit the bottom and we had a bite then, literally just as it hit the bottom. You sometimes pick up the bigger fish doing this. But it's a phenomenal way of catching roach. And just keeping it nice and simple. Oh, there we go. Just as it's starting to hit the bottom. So a little little tiny ding dang dilly dink then. Oh, and again, there we go. So it might be that this this starts to be more effective now. We brought that them casters into it. That was two bites, you know, just before it hit the bottom. Oh yes, you know what I mean, folks. Look at them beauties. <laughs> Want to chuck at them? Yes, please. Hey up, we got a friend. 
got a got a pheasant. Go on the pheasants. Let's give them some magwise. So I'm gonna stick with this one for a bit now. So you see like a bat took of them all day, you can soon do a decent weight. You know, they were getting, we were getting sort of 30 pounds on the matches last year when I took at them all day. Amazing fishing. So the roach in these commercials as well, they're just, they're not fished for all, all summer and what have you. And then this is the time of year now, like November onwards till, till March when they proper have a chew and you have some fantastic days on them. go so this rig's going more effective now a little bit quicker than that uh Balkan droppers one but certainly starting off wise as i said with that ground bait the Balkan droppers was the right way to go um you wouldn't change literally anything but as soon as them roach start becoming more active as the you know the water starts to warm up and you start introducing that, that loose feed and this tapered one that's the one to go through to, and then eventually the shallow one, which hopefully we'll get to show you in a bit. So you're inevitably going to get the odd one caster that goes past where you're fishing. Don't worry about it. As long as the, the bulk of your feed lands this side, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. So again, that is just settling, probably now. And there we go. Right, straight away again. Little bobby fish. So there you go then folks, there's not much more to it than that, I think you, you need to come back to me in about, I'm going to say an hour, when hopefully there'll be uh, some element of fishing shallow, then you can see, you know, how everything can speed up, you know, the fish should get a little bit bigger, uh, but it's just the frequency you're going to catch them, but it's all down to the first the first instant is putting that ground bait in getting the fish into the swim first but obviously not putting too much food content in and then judging you know from there that's when you're introducing the element of a uh, loose feeding maggots or casters how it was when we started off this session i wouldn't have put any uh, casters i wouldn't have started loose feeding because i was quite happy getting them bites just on just using the ground bait and i'd have, I'd have fished it out and just fished it out but I'd have been constantly looking if people around me were loose feeding you know getting more bites striking all the time then that's when you bring it into it because it doesn't have doesn't have any effect or anything like that, that ground bait's there it's going to hold fish in your peg but it's just the fact of casters or maggots loose feeding for me is usually when you're not getting bites you're trying to make something happen if they come onto the ground bait and stay in your peg you'll have the best days fishing in the old wide world go and get on it folks go and get catching some roach and come back to me in a bit when I'm going to be going uh, catching some shallow hopefully yeah Right then folks, so probably just over 90 minutes into the session and what a session it's been. It's been bite a chalk since the last time you caught up with me. It's just unbelievable. I've had a few better skimmers, but it's been mainly roach. Now what is noticeable, and that's why we're going back through this again, is remember me saying about the fish, and usually the odd bigger fish will come shallow. Well, I want to show you the signs to look for. So I'm on the tapered rig. Most of the bites are coming, not even when it's getting down to the bottom now. We're sort of getting bites as it's like that and a bit of the body sticking out of the water. So it's signs like that that you're looking for and also little dinks, but missing the bites, far looking them, uh, this, that and the other. You know what I mean? If the fish are falling off, then it's all signs that the fish are coming up in the water. I can't wait to get shallow and show you. But before we do that, uh, we're going to go back onto the bottom so I can show you what I mean and look for the signs to change. Change to caster or caster, keeping all you uh, southern southern folks happy. Casters! Change to that and the fish, yeah, they've been a little bit better. They're probably averaging like two or three ounces rather than them little babby ones that you're getting on maggot. Um, the only trouble and my problem with casters is if you bump one or you strike a little bit too hard and get a bit too giddy, it falls off. 
you know what I mean? It's one of them. And banded cast at this time of year, folks, it's definitely, definitely not the same. So get that out of your head. It can be shallow, but definitely not on the bottom. Waffling again, aren't I? Right, come on, let me show you what I mean. So back on the tapered rig. Again, nothing has changed. I've introduced a little bit more ground bait, but you know, uh, I was still getting bite a truck. I just thought I'd put some in just when we got in them skimmers, uh, but we're still getting loads of rope. So again, holding back hard. And then the fish had been holding it up from like this point here. See what I mean? He had a little dink then. Or just before it hits the bottom. Still keeping them casters going in. That's not stopped. See you know what I mean? That was another one, one then. Let me just come a little bit more over there to mark it. That's it. So it's all signs to look for. So we've had two, two bites straight away there with nothing on the end, which is not what we want really, is it? We want to be coming back with a roach every time. Or a roach. So it's things like that to look for. So if we miss a bite now, where we are, it's on the bottom now, get a little dink now, then obviously again it's signs that the fish are coming up in the water. Oh no, we had him. <laughs> we had him. It might be one of them, it might be a skimmer. Go on. Go on, the fishies. So as you can see, you know, we're still getting plenty of bites. It's been like this all the time. Oh no, it's a better roach. It's been like this all the time, you know. Quite a chuck, and that's slightly better stamp on caster. Yeah? So it's definitely worth experimenting with that. Gonna have one more quick go in it, just so you can see. I'm gonna show you getting what am I? Should I go shallow? No, I'm gonna have one more go on this and then I'm gonna go shallow. Because I want to show you the difference in your catch rate when you go shallow when you get them competing. I said that they can come on at any time, you know, obviously the later on it gets or straight away. So you've just got to be mindful of it and get ready to, to change when they come onto that loose feed. So again, holding that tight line, looking for signs all the time. And cast is going in. That was a little dink then. Oh, it's another better one. So, at the minute, folks, I wouldn't change what I'm doing. <laughs> but I'm going to go shallow after this one. It's just been amazing. I think it's one of them days today where, you know, the fish are starving because it's been iced up for quite a bit. Then they're just coming into that, that feed. I want to show you how quicker the catch rate is when you go shallow. So, again, we had them two little dinks on that first go we tried it. I mean... Would I, be I, would, I would be changing because you'll see the difference now, I'm convinced. So, this is set around two foot. Remember, we've got a lighter elastic on this and I'm going to put on a single caster. I'd either go single caster or side up a maggot whenever I'm fishing shallow. But because I've been feeding casters and the proper onto it, uh, that's why I'm going on casters on the hook. Now, difference um, with this on, because we've got shallow rig on, is we need to feed before we ship out. Because you've been feeding that area for quite a while, you know how much pressure to put on your catapult. But if anything, just earn the side of caution and just drop them casters a little bit shorter. That's probably going to be about a metre shorter where I want to be. But it's all about getting that bait in so that when we ship out, we've got them fish coming into that feed. And the first thing, oh, I've tangled my bloody, 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 bloody rig. Too giddy, aren't I, folks? There we go. We've untangled it. First thing I want to do is flick that rig out away from me and come... Bring my pole back so I've got a right tight line and holding that to me back shots. So we had a little, oof, whoa, we had a dink there straight away. So I'll flick that rig out so it's nice and tight and then go back for feeding again. So you saw how quick that was. That bite straight away. Now, what I'm looking for is signs of my float. If I'm getting most of them, see on that angle, obviously that tells me that the fish is shallower than what I'm fishing at. Whereas if I'm getting bites when the floats, just about settled there and I'm at the right depth. But I always want to maintain that slight angle on my pole so everything's nice and tight because bites can be an absolute nightmare shallow sometimes when they're diting through that feed. So you see I've increased my frequency of my feed as well uh, which again very important because what we want to do now is introduce less feed but feed more often so you're getting them competing. And I've just relayed that rigging again after sort of what, 30 seconds or something? Don't want to leave it settled after that because I'm expecting the fish to come uh, or the bites to come through the water. Another little dink then. 
rather than when it's settled. I mean, you will get them sometime when it's settled, but usually, because it's not natural, that bait just suspended in up in the water, the fish would expect that bait to be falling through with the, with the loose offerings. Keep that going in. So it's settled now, so I'm going to leave it about another 10 seconds. We've had, what have we had? Two or three little dinks. I did bump that first one, so whether that's just marked my caster a little bit, I don't know. If I don't get a bite this time, I'm going to come back and change it. That's the worst thing about casters. But when you get them going proper, you should just nail it like that. There you go. So, see what I mean about being a bigger fish and why you need lighter elastic? And that was on the drop, that. That was what? Probably a foot and a half under the surface. Keep that bait going in. It's just phenomenal fishing, it really is. Because them, them bigger fish just want to be first to the bait, you see. So that's why generally you catch the bigger fish shallower and you get them much quicker as well. That's when you do like the, the bigger weights and the proper weight builders, the bigger fish. What's it going to be? Well, it might be far looked actually. I think it's a better one, but just one far looked. Again, there's things like that to, to look for. If you're far looking and then again you're too deep. I'm going to knock six inches off that float next time. Come on. There we go. It's, oh, it was a blooming roach right on its back. Nobody likes to see him fall off, do they? So, every one we've had, the float's been like that. So what I'm going to do is knock, probably not six inches, probably about three or four inches off. And this is why we use stots and not shots. So I can move them shots down, sorry, stots down, so everything's nice and even all the way through that rig. Move them back shots down as well. And bait up again. Oh, I thought that was a great big roach. It was a better roach, but it's blooming through its blooming back. So it's mad, isn't it? Ice on the water over half the lake is still frozen with ice, and we're getting bites at what 20, 22 inches deep. So again, just fed some bait, ship out nice and quick, flick that rig past it, and hold that tight line to your back shots. Obviously, the clearer the water, you know, the, the deeper you might need to go. Look at that, straight away changing that depth. Just about settled, I'd say. But this is why you need that softer elastic on when you're fishing shallow for these kind of fish. Look at that beauty. So you begin to see how much quicker when you get into a rhythm, and obviously we're fast forward and everything, we're doing everything quick for you. Uh, but you can see when you get into a rhythm how quick you can potentially be. And obviously we're just fishing one line today at 13, you know. There's nothing to stop. These fish will come like six metres, seven metres. So you can imagine fishing this rig shorter. It'd be like proper game on. So again, just be conscious of keeping that. See, that was like even shallower again, that. And it's big on my blooming caster. So we'll get some bait in. So that was shallower again that, I'd say that was probably no more than like 12 inches under the water that time. Keep with the castle though, because it does pick out the bigger fish. As I say, as soon as it goes a little bit warmer, that's when you can use banded casting, you won't have the uh, problem. That's the thing, Keep feeding that bait first and then that, flicking that rig out past your pole top or away from your pole top, that's why I like to have a long bit of line pole top to float. So you see I'm feeding more often, but not as many casters. Whereas before I was probably putting 25, 30, and now I'm feeding probably 10 to a, 10 to a dozen or something like that. Bit of a blooming casting as well. Right, I'm gonna go side up maggot. So side up maggot just stays on much better. So I'll literally fold the maggot round and just hook it right through, right through the middle. Probably be smaller fish, but you know, if you get some bigger fish there, they're not bothered. But it's usually the smaller fish on maggot. That's why I like feeding cast, uh, fishing casters. All right, so I'll flick that out, tight line. Keep on with that feed. Go on. Go on. 
Let's see a slightly smaller fish on maggot. But much quicker and you haven't got any fear of it falling off either. You can strike a bit harder as well. Not that we like striking hard and setting you up. Just getting into rhythm with all aspects of fishing. But certainly this time of year, targeting them roach, it's just it's phenomenal it is. When you get them going, they're, they're very willing roach, especially you know, on waters like this, commercials. They'll pretty much feed no matter how cold it is. As long as you're fishing, obviously, right rigs for them, right baits, you will, you will get bites on the coldest of cold days. So you see how much quicker it is, potential. And it says nothing to stop you during these even closer. What's this? Another roach thought it was a skimmer then. You can do a right weight, can't you? So it was weird before, keeping that maggot on, I was just getting little tiny babby ones, but now they're a bit bigger. So if you can get away with it, with maggot, obviously it's staying on, do it. But be mindful that your bigger fish generally will be on casters. But if you're finding that the fish are the same size on casters as they are on maggot, you as well just sticking on maggot. Because obviously it's hard here, it's going to stay on. It's mad this, isn't it? Freezing cold, I bet. I bet air temperatures only about three degrees today. And we're getting bites like 20 inches deep. Oh, amazing. Cool. on. So they're even potentially shallower than what I'm fishing now. The bites are coming just before my hook bait reaches. Oh, that was a nice roach. Just before my hook bait reaches the depth. There, anywhere from now I'm getting bites. But I'm not going to leave it that long because we're all coming through the water. Lay that out to the side. All the nice tight line. So these could be the smaller fish again. That's three bites we've missed now. Again, because we've got a maggot on. Oh no, maybe not. Maybe not. But again, you see the need for that five's elastic though. Just avoids them fish coming right to the top of the water. Spitting that hook out. Net this one. Go on, roach. Yeah, so if they're all the same like size on maggot and caster, it's pointless going on the caster. Because you get more goes at it. With maggot, just make sure it's definitely better side side hooked. Probably catch a couple on the same bait, but I do like to change my bait. So we'll catch one more. And I think that'll round. And if you're not, so. One thing, is, as I say, is I, I can't stress enough, is keep working that rig. Once it's at the bottom of that fall, that bait, you don't really get bites. So you've got to relay the rigging again. Keep that bait going in. You see how often I'm feeding now? Even though it's freezing, freezing cold, they're still going to have that bait. Just getting into rhythm. Like all aspects of fishing, it's just getting into that rhythm. Nice, smooth, steady rhythm. <laughs> and say other things to look for. You know, we foul up that uh, that one before. Or if you start missing loads of bites, that's all the key for you to change what you're doing and likewise the opposite if you're not getting bites um certainly when fishing shallow then that's when you'd change and go a little bit deeper you know search the columns of the water but in a nutshell folks that has been one of the best days pleasure fishing i've had for roach in a long long time loads and loads of bites and just kept everything nice and simple from introducing the ground bait at the start 
to get the fish into the peg and then making the decision to, to lose feed because you know if you've got a lot of roach there they're going to come to that bait nice and quick and they're, well you, you've seen they're so willing to feed on the coldest of cold days roach uh, keeping it simple Oh, excuse me, keeping it simple with the three rigs, so your bulk and droppers for when the fish are in your peg proper, your tapered one for like searching the depths, and obviously your shallow one for when there's loads there. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to proper enjoy doing this series, I think, folks. So, uh, as I mentioned before, if you can think of, you know, venues where there's a particular species of fish that I can come and catch and to make sure it's hired and chubs and crucians and tents, got to go through my favourite first, folks, then drop, your, uh, drop them in the comments below, and I can't wait to, uh, to come and have a do and uh, come and meet you all so yeah hope you enjoyed that get out give it a go and go and catch some great big roach